Olá, Deus te abençoe. Hello, God bless you. Thank God. Welcome to the Life Chain Today program. Thank you so much for being there. And may God bless you very much. Your home, your family, your day. May He give you what your heart desires. May He pass, and as it is written, leave a special, a special blessing. I believe in this with all my heart. Believe. Look. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save, save anyone? Faith and works are inseparable. And we were saved, not by works. We aren't saved by works, but by faith, but by good works. But for good works. And the Lord expects to see this faith that we declared that we have through our actions. The righteous shall live by faith. This kind of faith. I say, I have faith in God, but I don't show it with actions, courageous actions, bold actions, consistent. No. This is a great mistake. I say that I have faith, that I believe in God, but my actions, my works, my behavior, my lifestyle doesn't show it. Did you understand? When I see a person who acts solely based on what they're feeling, It's clear that they don't really believe. Don't, don't believe, truly believe. Because they don't move themselves based on what they know. They move themselves, their, themselves, their actions are aligned to, the, to their emotions, with their emotions, and not with the living faith in the, in the Word of God. Because they don't have it. They say they have it, but when they have to make a decision, they make this based on feelings, on emotions, on bad thoughts, on bad memories. People. God has been doing so much. He had already done so much for us. But it's impressive how we are able to stay for a whole morning only remembering bad things. And then we ask, why are we bad? I'm bad. I don't have energy. I don't have joy. I, I'm with an anguish. It's obvious that the person is anguished. Because thoughts generate feelings that generate actions. Actions. The Bible says that the one who guards their tongue guards the, their soul of anguish, of pain. If you start to think about foolish things, it will generate terrible feelings and you'll start to speak foolish things. You go to that outpouring, emotional outpourings, you will want to talk and in the end you planted a bad seed and then will come what? A harvest. How many times I have seen people that they even took some steps. You know, they had some progress, but all that was in only one day The steps they took forward, they took twice back. 
But, you know, that small contest of credibility and then the person go back to the end because they didn't pass in that test. Because unfortunately, they continue to answer with their emotions and not with the faith in the Word of God. They are full of themselves. They are full of disbelief. Look, suppose you see a brother or a sister who has no food or clothing, and you say goodbye and have a good day, stay warm and eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? Maybe I can talk beautifully about God, about faith, but when I have to apply it, I don't apply it. I don't put it into practice. So, if someone needs something in front of me, there's no use for me to preach for them for an hour. They won't even understand me. Many times I will show God. And it's true. It's impressive how you show God. Sometimes with your mouth closed, going there, giving the food, the clothes, supporting, giving, instructing that person. You showed your faith. You showed in what you believe. You put out what is inside of you. It's too easy to be a hypocrite, to speak something but leave another thing. And that's what happened with many people. The person speaks very good about God, but in practice, in the reality, it's not what happens. They know how to teach others, but they don't put it into practice in their lives because they are full of themselves. They care about presenting themselves to make a good image. But that's not, but that isn't consistent because it wasn't grounded on the faith, on, on the faith of the Word of God. So I can come here and bring incredible words for you. And in my daily routine, daily life, I don't apply it. So it doesn't have consistency. It doesn't have to preach, to lead a service. Worship serving isn't difficult, but to leave that worship in service is the question. I always say it to leaders, to pastors. I say for you to teach people how they should live their lives is too easy. But now God wants to see this preaching in our day life, that I may apply in my own life what I'm teaching others. As a woman, wife, mother, grandmother, as a person, right? What kind of Christian are you? You say that you are a copy of Christ. You speak well about Christ, but in daily life, this is not applied. So, we need to take it seriously because this is the problem. There is the problem. Faith without works is dead. So, in a moment of emotion, I can talk very well about, speak very well about God. But, and when I am under pressure... And when you are under pressure, what will come out? Will come out what is there. If your faith is emotional, it won't come out anything that is really useful. Many times, usually, it will come out 
emotional outpourings and balanced actions, demands, requests. Some people, they are eternal claimants. They are always demanding, requiring. They don't make an effort, but they are demanding. So they want credibility, but they don't build credibility. They want to know everything, but they aren't reliable, loyal. They want to make part of, part of everything, but only in the good time, because they don't want to build that. In the time of building, they aren't there. They want to give opinion, but they don't want to invest in that. Did you understand? Every time they have opportunity to show that they really changed, what comes out of them is childish, immaturity, hasty attitudes, the same attitudes of always, the, the unbalanced actions of, of always, the demands of always. So... They show that they didn't change. No, because now I changed. Now I understood my purpose. I understood where I, where I have to be. I understood my place. Now, now, until they be tested. When they are tested, they demand from their spouse the same things they used to demand, to require. They have the same attitudes they have always had. They are embarrassed. They embarrass who is next to them by their side. And look, anyone with a bit of common sense, wisdom, knows. I can never vouch for this person, but my hand in the fire for them. Because I will burn, right? Because sometimes there are people who are there. You want to encourage them. And you want them to grow and you support them, and you are there honoring and, and speak, and suddenly the person ruins everything. Ruins everything. Because actually, in the reality, there were only emotions. They haven't changed. That didn't enter in a revealed way yet. The person doesn't believe in that. They speak something, but they do something different. Because in the reality, they don't believe. It's a faith without works. They say that they have faith. They know how to speak. They know to teach. People, there are people who know how to teach really well. They are an excellent preacher, but they don't leave it. They just don't leave it. They don't leave it. They know how to speak in a loving way. The person talks about Jesus, about changes in a way that leaves you speechless. But in the first pressure, when they are tested, victimism comes out, immaturity, childish, precipitation, hasty behaviors, inconsistency, disbelief comes out, the same emotional outpourings, the same demands. So there are people who you look and you say, what a folly, such foolishness. It's the foolish one. They live an emotional faith. Because they don't have works. The person convinced themselves that that is true. But in the first pressure, when they're tested, it comes out only emotions. That was an emotional fate. There aren't works. They know how to speak, but their works aren't aligned with this faith that they say they have. Because there are no mature attitudes, it's consistent, stable attitudes, balanced, wise attitudes, right? The person isn't 
this person grounded on the word, but on emotion. So it means that they are building in the sand. That's why a small building falls. They build a little bit more and it falls. They go and retreat and come back. They live through ups and downs, right? So, they are always surfing, right? There are times when they are at the top, there are times when they are at the bottom. Why? Because there isn't consistency, they don't believe. They didn't dive deep. They are still full of themselves. Breakthroughs didn't happen. They still don't think. As the Word teaches us, they don't use the mind of Christ. They don't live as this new creature. They still don't answer, don't solve their lies, don't take the, don't make decisions based on the word, but based on their beliefs, their emotions. On what was placed, but in them when they were still a child. They acted in a, in a way for a whole life. They saw their family, their parents acting like that. And they're still full of this. They still don't believe. And if you don't believe, you can convince yourself that you believe. But you will only know when you You'll be under pressure, right? Because that's, it will come out. But it's true, right? The real you, who you really, who you really are, what is real, what really is inside of you. If you change it or not, we we'll only know when the test come. That's what is in the Deuteronomy 8. The Lord tested the people to know what is there inside of their heart. To know from what material they were made. So the Lord tests us. He wants to lead us to this great place, but He tests us. He's testing us. He wants to know what is inside of us. And there's only one way. Testing us. When we are tested, there is no other way. Because it is in the pressure that will come out who we really are, in what we believe, what is really inside of us. If we walk by love, if we really walk by love, if we have already forgotten, if we have really believed, if we are really stable people, if we have it truly matured. Did you understand? So faith without works is dead. And, and that's what is written. Look. So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. A faith that doesn't have good deeds, grateful attitudes, generous attitudes, faithful, loyal attitudes, consistent, constant attitudes, persevering, courageous attitudes. I used to say that faith, the living faith, you see it through attitudes of perseverance, of the determination, sacrificial attitudes. Don't say to me that you have a living faith if you don't have courage, boldness, 
hardihood. If you don't sacrifice, I will not give to my God sacrifice that won't cost me anything. Those who want to follow Jesus, they have to deny themselves. The door that leads to heaven, it's narrow and tight. If I don't want pressure, if I don't want to go through anything, if I don't renounce. So, the Bible says that if I go to give an offering and I understand that I have a problem with someone, I have to let my, leave my offering there in the altar and go there to solve it. That I have to bless my enemies, to love my enemies. It means that love is a decision. It's not related to feelings. Forgiveness, it is a decision. It's not related to feelings. To remember is a choice. I can remember bad things and I can remember the goodness of the Lord. So, I choose how I live my life. The Lord gave me the free will. I can choose to believe and live as it is written. Right? Have deeds, attitudes aligned with this with this faith. And I can say that I that I believe, but continue to live based on my emotions, my feelings, con to continue to make decisions based on feelings, emotions, offense, to define my life based on a moment. I can Rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Look what, are, what people are living. I will honor them. I'll bless them. I'll rejoice with them. And I will attract it to me. But I can also fill myself with envy, bitterness, resentment, and be angry, offended. It means I am poisoning myself. And I am attracting only what is bad for my life. Curse. I'm, attra I'm not attracting anything good for me. You can choose how you live your life. Looking at problems or looking at Jesus. Looking to the right or to the left. Or looking up. Looking to the past and moving forward. Or moving forward. Setting your mind on things above. Is speaking the word, meditating on it and speaking it, or thinking about foolish things, remembering foolish things and speaking speaking foolish things. You choose. You choose. The Lord instructed Joshua to meditate on the word day and night. The psalmist said the same thing. Now, I choose in what I will meditate on, think about, and consequently talk, speak. The mouth speaks, Jesus said, of what our hearts is full, filled. A heart full of God can't speak another thing if it's not, if it's not about the greatness of the Lord. Let's go. Enough of dead life, dead faith, emotional faith, sentimental faith. Enough of it. Believe in the word. And look, it starts. For many time, it starts by habit. You have been acting in a way, you speak in a way. Now you have to take consciousness about the word and act aligned with the word. And, and train it, train it, train it. And even if you make some mistakes, align yourself again. No, I won't live like this anymore. I won't think like this anymore. I won't speak like this anymore. I will walk by faith. And my deed will always be aligned with this faith. Natural faith, natural results. Supernatural faith, supernatural results. That faith is an emotional faith. Sentimental faith, sentimental faith, but a living faith is the one that will, that goes beyond feelings and emotions. You do what you're reading, 
what you are what you believe so even if everything seems to be contrary you have both courageous sacrificial attitudes attitudes of forgiveness loving attitudes generous generous and grateful attitudes get up God has a lot for you walk by faith Align your works, your deeds with this faith in the Word of God, and you will see what God will do for you. Show a living faith now, and you'll attract favor, power to your life. If you believe, desire, and want to pray with me, prepare something you want to receive prayer for. I'll be right back to pray with you. Senhor, meu Deus e meu... Lord, my God and my Father, I pray for the dear life that is with me. And I ask, may this word have transformed their lives forever. May they have understood, may the understanding have been illuminated, may they have understood, discerned, may they have mind to comprehend, Lord. May it have entered in an explosive explosive way inside of them. May they see and may they act. May they believe and may they may they align themselves with this faith. May their actions, their words be words of faith aligned with your word. I can have I can have tons of sermons a swollen mind. I might be swollen with a lot of sermons, messages, but if I don't put faith, it doesn't have any value. We need to unite by faith. Align our actions with this faith. And then, we'll see your glory. May they believe, bless homes, families, all who sent their prayer requests. I consecrate everything. And I, deter, and I declare changes, understanding, clarity, strength, renewal, comfort, maturity, happiness, growth. I bless my friends and fellow sowers. I prophesy the gift of wealth, prosperity, and anointing of conquest, and anointing of ten times more. A wise mind of govern, dominion, raise more sowers because we need them. And wherever this program is reaching, may this word have been opened their eyes. May this person have been comprehended, clearly understood, and have already gotten up, aligned themselves with you because it because this leverages our life. It transforms. Thank you so much for everything. I ask for your blessing. I give my blessing and I thank you for everything. Amen. Amen, amen, thank God. The Life Helpline phone number is 5511-3296-9449. We're located at 995 Taquari Street in Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's where we are today, Firm House. An incredible work, 25 hours of prayer and cry out messages. A powerful day. What a work, what a blessing, what a privilege we have to make this work. Count on us, be among us, come with your family, bring a guest, Sunday and special blessing for all mothers. Bring your mom. If the Lord Jesus doesn't come back, I'll continue here talking about life and life change. Have a nice day. Amen.